What if you left Earth behind, not to visit Mars, not to float around the moon, but to journey 635 light years away to a blue world so distant, its light began traveling toward us in the Middle Ages. Welcome to Kepler 22b, a planet that might just be another Earth or a trap disguised as paradise. This is no science fiction fantasy. It's a window into what our future explorations might reveal. A planet bathed in ocean, warmed by a sun-like star. A second Earth, if we're lucky. But here's the twist. On this watery alien world, the very air you breathe could turn fatal. So what would happen if you actually landed there? Let's imagine we've developed a propulsion system far beyond anything available today. A warp drive, perhaps. With that, the impossible becomes plausible. You're aboard a sleek, AI-guided vessel, crossing unfathomable distances by bending space itself. But even with advanced tech, Kepler 22b isn't your average tourist destination. It's 635 light years from Earth. Traveling at 20% the speed of light, already wildly optimistic, would still take over 3,000 years. Unless you're not bound by conventional physics. In this hypothetical, you arrive in moments, not centuries. But as you emerge from warp, you are greeted by the glowing amber light of a familiar looking sun. Kepler-22, the host star, is a G-type, just like ours. That's a good start. The planet you're approaching orbits comfortably within the so-called Goldilocks zone. It's not too hot, not too cold, just right for liquid water. But don't exhale just yet. As your ship slows and stabilizes in orbit, you peer through the viewport. What you see takes your breath away. An endless ocean stretches across the entire planet. No continents, no cities, just liquid, swirling in endless waves. A true water world. Kepler 22b is what scientists call a super Earth, a rocky exoplanet larger than ours. Specifically, it's about 2.1 times Earth's size and nearly nine times more massive. That means gravity here is over twice as strong. Every step you take could feel like you're lugging around an extra person on your back. And then there's the atmosphere. From orbit, it looks thick, hazy. That could be a blessing or a curse. A thick atmosphere helps retain heat, possibly allowing for stable liquid water. But it could also mean crushing pressure at sea level. Your mission is clear, descend to the surface sample the atmosphere and water, and evaluate the potential for life. You begin your descent. The closer you get, the darker it becomes. The sunlight fades behind layers of mist and storm-like clouds. Your instruments begin detecting signs of water vapor, hydrogen, helium, possibly methane and ammonia too. Suddenly a break in the clouds reveals the endless ocean below. It's stunning in yet eerily familiar. Your ship skims the surface, there's no land in sight. Eventually you detect a raised area, maybe a volcanic ridge or undersea plateau that breaks the surface just enough to serve as a landing pad. You suit up, open the airlock, and take your first steps onto Kepler-22b. Immediately everything feels heavier. Your muscles strain, breathing is difficult. The pressure you realize is far more intense than Earth's. Even in a pressurized suit, you feel it. Before we go further, let's break down what makes a planet habitable. Just being in the Goldilocks zone isn't enough. A planet needs liquid water, a stable atmosphere, the right chemical ingredients for life, manageable surface gravity, a magnetic field to protect from solar radiation. Kepler 22b is a mixed bag. The presence of water is promising but it might not be water as we know it. With high pressure, it could exist in a supercritical state, not truly liquid, not quite gas. In this state, it's a dense, soupy fluid, potentially toxic, unpredictable. The atmosphere might be unbreathable, lacking oxygen, and filled with volatile compounds. Breathing without filtration would be deadly. To understand Kepler 22b, we can look at extreme environments here on Earth. Lake Vostok in Antarctica, buried under four kilometers of ice, it might host life cut off for millions of years. Microbial, 
resilient, ancient. The Mariana Trench, pressure so high they can crush submarines, yet life thrives in the dark. Hydrothermal vents, spewing toxic chemicals into ocean water, yet teeming with alien-like life. Could Kepler 22b have something similar? Microbes adapted to crushing pressure and chemical-rich oceans? Possibly, but don't expect dolphins. Some astrobiologists believe that if life exists elsewhere, it may not evolve into complex organisms like us. It may remain microscopic, hidden beneath the waves. You collect a water sample. Your suit filters detect elevated levels of heavy metals and acidic compounds. Not drinkable, not even safe to touch. The atmosphere, too, turns against you. You pause just for a second and inhale through a weakened suit valve. That's all it takes. Pressure crashes your lungs. The air, devoid of oxygen, invades your body like a toxin. You collapse. Your vision fades. A human body evolved for Earth's gentle touch is no match for this alien ocean world. But this isn't the end of the mission. It's a lesson. Kepler 22b may be beautiful, distant, and fascinating, but it's not home. And perhaps that's the point. We chase the stars because we dream of belonging out there. But maybe, just maybe, planets like Earth are rarer than we think. The more we learn about alien worlds, the more we should treasure our own. We've yet to find a place more perfect than the pale blue dot we already live on. So what if you landed on Kepler 22b? You'd walk on a world light years away. You'd taste the future of exploration, but you'd also understand in the deepest way possible that Earth is still the best shot we have.